Now, any message that you have for the jurors who convicted you, the prosecutors who are going after you, um, to people who think that you are not a good person, that you are someone that abused these animals, that killed these tigers, um, do you have a message for them, Joe? You know, for my jurors, I, I know what they did, and they they probably felt at the time that they'd done their job. Uh, now I hope that they see the evidence coming out and how how corrupt and crooked all of this went down and the backstabbing between the government witnesses now and, and, and coming up and, and admitting to perjury. I mean, Alan Glover is facing prison for, for admitting to the FBI that he lied to the grand jury and he lied to my jury. And then to go one step further and admit to plotting to murder me with Jeff Lowe is pretty outrageous. Uh, so, you know, do, do I fault them for me being in prison? No. Okay. Then the next jury, I hope they take a little bit longer to look at all the evidence uh, before they convict me or any other jury that sits on a jury before you take a person's life. You need to really look at the characters and and how well the, the courtroom has been orchestrated and the agenda because you're taking people's lives. Uh, you think I took five tigers' lives? You took my life. Okay? Think about that. I euthanized five tigers that were crippled and sick and, and time to go. Okay? You took my life for the rest of my life just because you believed the orchestrated movie that was going on in a federal courtroom. All right, Joe Maldonado talking with Vinnie Politan. Let's bring in our special guest this hour in Atlanta, Georgia, criminal defense attorney, law professor at Emory University and Georgia Innocence Project board member, Molly Palmer, who also happens to be one of the attorneys representing Joe Exotic in his appeal. Molly, great to see you. Um, what, what is the most compelling thing that you believe could end up giving um, Joe Maldonado his freedom? So I think there are so many misconceptions about this case, and I think to start, it makes sense to clear those up. First of all, what is driving the amount of time that he's serving are two counts related to uh, using an interstate telecommunication device to conspire to commit a murder, to solicit a murder. Two counts related to Carol Baskin, counts one and two. The Tiger counts, those are misdemeanor counts, okay? And then there are some counts that are additional felonies, violation of the Lacey Act, wildlife counts that involve falsifying paperwork. But what really is driving the sentence are the two counts related to his alleged solicit solicitation of hitmen to kill Carol Baskin. So we knew that this judge was going to resentence our client to a similar sentence. This is federal court. It's driven by the United States sentencing guidelines. During the appeal, um, what was won in the Tenth Circuit was a grouping issue. It lowered the guidelines ever so slightly. We knew the judge was going to stay in those guidelines. But there are two major issues here with Joe's case. The first being his sentence, the second being his conviction, and we're going to attack both of them. First, in terms of the sentence that was just handed down, we believe that that is a violation of due process. Um, we're going to appeal to the 11th Circuit. You cannot run two sentences like that for the same scheme to kill the same person consecutively. He got 102 months on the first attempt to allegedly hire a hitman to kill Carol Baskin and 102 months on the second. Other circuits that have addressed this issue, the first and the sixth said, no, these have to run together at the same time. But second of all, separate from that appeal that we're taking to the 10th Circuit Court of Appeals, we are filing a motion for new trial to undo his conviction. And this is based on what we just heard, uh, perjury committed in front of grand jury and at trial, and witnesses uh, incentivized informants taking the stand and not being truthful. And then the question becomes, did the government know about this? What we have found out through our post-conviction litigation is that the lead case agent, who is a fish and wildlife agent, not an FBI agent, Agent, seem to be pushing witnesses to testify in a certain way. And so that is the essence of Joe's case. And those are the ways that we plan to attack it, overturn his conviction, and modify his sentence before we even do uh, the motion for a new trial. I'm assuming both tracks will be uh, going simultaneously. Alan Glover, is he the key here for you? Um, because he has come out and said, I lied. And he's admitting to it. And uh, as 
Joe Exotic pointed out, he's now facing potential perjury charges here. Is, is, is he the linchpin here? He's one of many linchpins that we have. He's the hitman, right? And Alan Glover is an interesting character because he is profoundly sensitive. And ultimately, he felt that he could not live with himself once Joe was sentenced to this you know, incredibly long period of incarceration. And he decided to sign an affidavit and say, listen, the government pressured me, this fish and wildlife agent pressured me to say certain things. And I said them and, you know, he struggles with addiction. Um, and ultimately he, he is going to be tremendous, I think, as we move forward with the motion for new trial, because if his testimony was different, if it was truthful testimony, there's not a jury out there who would have convicted. Joe on these murder for hire accounts. Yeah, Joe mentioned that in the interview with uh, with Vinny, uh, basically admitting to perjury himself, plotting to also kill Joe Exotic with Jeff Lowe. It's a very uh, elaborate scheme that he that outlined. Uh, and the law offices of Phillips and Hunt has posted several interviews with Glover on their YouTube channel, seemingly to confirm the statements made by their client Joe Exotic. Take a listen. So you and you and Jeff prior to this whole thing going down, talked about killing Joe. Yeah. Nobody knows that, but you know. Including uh, tying a wire around a tree so that he- I know the, the wire is still at the park, right where I, where I lived in the trailer. It's still laying back here. I got rid of it. I got rid of it, but nevertheless. It's like a piano wire, you can't see yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. He'll cut your head off. Whether it hits you in your chest or what, it's still going to get to your neck. He knew about that. Okay. I even walked in there and showed him where it was going to happen. I'm going to start with paragraph four. Tell me yes or no, true or false, okay or inaccurate. I committed perjury during my grand jury testimony regarding my involvement as the hitman in the murder for hire. Right. I committed perjury during my trial testimony regarding my involvement as the hitman in the murder for hire. 